Have you ever gone back to your old school, only to wonder when the classrooms got so tiny? The hallways that once felt like they went on forever now take just a few steps to cross. That park where you spent entire afternoons running around? It's barely more than a small patch of grass. It's a strange, almost unsettling feeling, like the world has quietly shrunk while you weren't paying attention. But here's the truth. Those places haven't changed at all. You have. And this shift in how we see familiar spaces reveals something fascinating about the way our brains measure, remember, and interpret the world around us. Let's unravel this curious trick of perception and find out why the spaces of our childhood seem so much smaller when we return to them as adults. Right here on History of Simple Things. As children, we're small, literally. We stand closer to the ground and everything around us towers above. A door frame might look like a giant's gate. The kitchen counter could feel like a high cliff. The school playground, a vast kingdom. Our scale reference is our own body. And since that's much smaller in childhood, everything else looks huge in comparison. It's not just about size though. Kids don't process distances and dimensions with the same accuracy adults do. Instead of thinking in meters or feet, we measure with feelings. That's so far, or that slide is enormous. We're also constantly in awe. When you're new to the world, everything feels bigger. Because it's not just about the physical size, it's about the emotional impression it leaves. As we grow, our bodies change and so does our perspective, literally. By the time you're an adult, you're standing much taller and your eyes are positioned higher off the ground. That same hallway you once had to look up at, now you see it from a more level angle. And here's where it gets tricky. Your brain quietly recalibrates its idea of what big means. The world doesn't grow with you, but your personal frame of reference expands. As your height increases, Objects and spaces start taking up less of your visual field. The swing set that once towered over you is now just a modest piece of metal. It's the same swing set, only your perspective has shifted. But there's also a mental component to why places seem smaller as we age. Our memories don't record the world like a perfect photograph. They're more like a sketch. When you think back to a place from childhood, your brain tends to exaggerate certain features, not in a deliberate way, but as part of how we store experiences. That's why some childhood memories feel almost magical or larger than life. They're tinted by emotion, novelty, and the sense of wonder you had at the time. When you revisit those places as an adult, you're not just seeing them as they are. You're comparing them to an inflated memory, so naturally, they feel smaller. It's like expecting to walk into a cathedral and finding a small chapel instead. There's another subtle factor, our sense of time. As children, a day feels long. Waiting for recess or a holiday can feel like an eternity. The spaces we inhabit during those stretched out moments become mentally larger because we spend more time noticing them. You might remember pacing across your school's basketball court during lunch and feeling like it took ages to get from one side to the other. Now, as an adult, with a faster moving sense of time, you cross that same space in seconds and it feels smaller simply because you're not lingering on it the same way. Our mental clock speed changes with age, and with it, our perception of the size of places. When we navigate the world, our brains create mental maps, networks of remembered distances, landmarks, and spatial relationships. As a child, these maps are rough and imprecise, because we're still learning how to measure and compare space. We might overestimate how long a road is because it takes so much energy to walk it, or because we've never traveled farther. As adults, we've built a much larger internal catalog of spaces. We've seen massive airports, endless highways, 
and towering skyscrapers. So when we return to that once huge playground, it pales in comparison to the mental giants we've encountered since. Experience doesn't just make you wiser, it also makes the world look a bit smaller. There's something bittersweet about this phenomenon. On one hand, it's a reminder of growth, both physical and mental. On the other hand, it can feel like losing a bit of magic. Places we held in our hearts as grand and mysterious now seem plain and confined. It's like pulling back the curtain and seeing the small room behind a stage set. This can spark nostalgia, but also a strange sense of loss. The space hasn't changed, but the way we experience it has, and there's no going back to that childlike perspective without, well, being a child again. What's fascinating is that this change is actually a sign of how adaptable the human brain is. We constantly adjust our perception to fit our environment and our own body. When we grow taller, our visual field changes, and the brain updates its size database accordingly. When we gain more experiences, our internal comparisons shift, making small places seem smaller. It's a built-in recalibration system that helps us navigate the world efficiently. The trade-off is that we lose some of the exaggerated grandeur that colored our childhood surroundings. While we can't physically shrink ourselves back to childhood proportions, we can choose to approach places with a more curious mindset. Looking closely at details, slowing down, and imagining how a space might feel to someone seeing it for the first time can help recapture a bit of that early wonder. It's not quite the same as seeing your schoolyard through eight-year-old eyes, but it's a way of keeping the sense of discovery alive. After all, the magic wasn't in the size of the place, it was in the way you experienced it. So why do places seem much smaller as we age? It's part biology, part psychology, and part nostalgia. We grow taller, so the world takes up less of our visual field. Our brains refine their spatial maps, and our sense of time speeds up. Memories exaggerate the size of places because they're colored by emotion and novelty, and when we return years later, reality feels scaled down. It's not the walls closing in, it's us expanding outward, physically and mentally. And maybe that's the real takeaway. The world itself doesn't shrink, but our relationship to it changes. The streets of your childhood might seem smaller now, but the horizons of your life have grown unimaginably larger. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.